third gear. Love it. All right, boys and girls. Something's a little bit different at Destination HD today. I wonder what that could be. Oh, I think you could figure it out pretty quickly, right? This ain't my Kawasaki Vulcan 900 I'm riding here. Oh no. We call her Big Red. And I'm happy to be sharing her maiden, her maiden, her maiden YouTube video for you guys. So over here in Northern Jersey, it's the middle of January. It's been rainy, cold. We actually had four inches of snow last week. Uh, but today, look at the sky. Right now it's 55 degrees, but only for like four hours. And then it's gonna drop to 30 degrees, like literally in the span of four hours. It's gonna go from 55 to 30. It's crazy. But, you know, when you get a little block of window like this, what do you do? You gotta take advantage of it, right? You got to take advantage of it. And that's what I'm doing. I've been itching to make a video on my Street Glide special. And for those who maybe are watching this for the first time or watching me for the first time, my name is Jason. I live in Northern Jersey. Uh, I started this channel about a year ago. Um, I've only been riding for two years, a little over two years now. I started out on a Kawasaki Vulcan 900. Loved it, a great first bike. But my dream was always, always to get a Harley. But what kind, you ask? Well, that's been a little bit of a journey for me. I've gone back and forth. I went from the Fat Boy to the Road King to the Lowrider ST to this bike. And I ended up with the Street Glide Special. This is my new to me 2022 Street Glide Special. Um, so why did I go with this bike? Well, it's a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons, really. One is that I like everything about it. I like the look. I like the look of it. Um, it has, I like the fact that I don't really have to take my eyes off the road to look down at the gauges. That was the one thing about like the Road King that I just couldn't get past on my Kawasaki. I had to look down, it was a tank mounted speedometer. Uh, I didn't like doing that. I felt like after a while, it bothered my neck. And after a while, it's just not really the safest thing to do, right? Anyway, uh, I'll tell you what, I didn't get this bike because of the radio or the navigation, but it's nice to have. Um, and if and when I want it, it's there, and that's just, that's just nice. And why not, right? Why not? Oh, where am I going? Oh, I went the, uh, shoot. I went the wrong way. I wasn't even paying attention to where I'm going. All right. I wasn't really, like, I was looking around for bikes. Uh, and then I found this at a dealership actually in New Hampshire, a small dealer. Uh, it's Joe's Bikes, if you ever heard of it. He has a YouTube channel. And he sells... Oops. Ooh! I almost put my foot down. I don't even know why I did that. I never do that. 
Anyway, Joe's Bikes. He sells uh, used bikes. He gets them in all different types. Harleys, a lot of Harleys. Um, but all different types of bikes. And he's, and I came across this one. It had 350 miles on it. 350, a 2022. Uh, it was bought originally at a dealer new by an older gentleman. And uh, it was just too much bike for him. And he didn't really ride it. 347 miles. And so it's in immaculate condition. Uh, it's practically it's practically showroom floor new um, and it came with custom pipes that have CTX or CXT pipes on it which make it sound pretty damn good I gotta say they're loud they're loud um, I'm gonna make another video on on just pipes and you know comparing these uh, if you guys have CXT pipes uh, like I want to know how they compare to like tab performance you know on the loudness scale because I'm wearing earplugs and these things are freaking loud so I came across this bike I saw it listed on Joe's bikes And it, it was like perfect. It was like almost too good to be true. Um, and and I jumped on it. I I I got a U-Haul motorcycle trailer. My wife's Subaru Cross Trek has a hitch on the back, and I in one day drove four and a half hours up to New Hampshire, got the bike, and drove four and a half hours back. You know what? I'm thinking to myself, I think it's pretty worth it. Um, so besides the custom pipes it came with already, right? Which whether I like them or not, it's better than the stock pipes, much better than the stock pipes. And so it buys me time to figure out what kind of pipes I really want. Um, It has Custom Dynamics LED front turn sickles. It has LED Custom Dynamics uh, saddlebag lights and turn signals. It came with a uh, luggage rack already on installed. But I gotta say the best part best part is the fact that it had such low miles under a thousand miles under 500 miles um, and of course you know there wasn't like a scratch or a dent on it anywhere it was it, it, it was great um, so I just I bit the bullet and I was like I it felt right you know what it just feels right it felt right um, it was either this or the Lowrider ST, which, you know, I test drove, I did a video on it, go check it out. And I really enjoyed that bike. The Lowrider ST, I could see myself on that bike easily. There was just a few things about it that just wore on me and, and was bugging me, whether it was trivial or not. Which was the saddlebag, different size saddlebags. I don't like the clam shape of the saddlebags. Um, I don't know. I like the stretch saddlebags, I'll be honest. I definitely prefer the stretch saddlebag look. I do like the batwing fairing. I, I do definitely, I think right now, prefer the street glide over the road glide. Uh, the road glide, I just feel like the fairing is too out there. I feel like I'm in like a Cadillac Escalade, you know? It's like too, I like the compact look. I like compact cars. I like compact bikes. 
uh, um, at least right now. You know, who knows? My taste might change in the future, but right now. Uh, this thing purrs. I can't wait to hear what this sounds like on the video because it purrs. This bike has rain mode. It has the traction RDRS system, traction control, hill assist, which I've already used. I kind of love the hill assist. That's a nice little perk. Um, and rain mode, which is this blue little rain cloud icon here. I'm not exactly sure how rain mode works, but since the roads are a little wet, I figured it would be appropriate. It probably gives you a little bit more traction, maybe less torque, I don't know. I'll have to uh, read up about rain mode. Anyway, I'm trying to take every opportunity I can here in the winter to stretch her legs out. I want to get her to a thousand miles and then I'm going to give her the uh, thousand mile service. And I'm just getting used to her, you know. This is a big bike, no doubt. Much bigger than my Kawasaki Vulcan Cruiser, but I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to handle her, and I think I can. I actually ordered a windshield that should be coming in about a week. I'll do a video on that. The first time I took this out on the highway, at highway speeds, anything 65 miles an hour and more, 65, 70, I was getting this crazy head buffeting, wind buffeting on my head. I was like a bobblehead. And I never, I never experienced that before on my Kawasaki, um, which didn't even have a windshield. So my whole body just got, um, you know, the wind. This, I'm still getting used to the fact that I have this beautiful fairing. It's blocking all the wind from this area of my body. Uh, but when I was when I hit 65, ooh, I felt it on my head. So I know that was a common problem for almost everybody, which is uh, why I ordered a windshield. And we'll do that, hopefully, that'll solve that problem. And now I'm figuring out what else I want to do to this bike. I think, I really think I'm going to go for a hill toe shifter. I think that'll just be easier and then in the future won't mess up my footwear when I get that. So I'm taking a little trip up right now to go get to my eye doctor to pick up some contact lenses and like I said it's 55 degrees it's just absolutely beautiful out right now considering although those dark clouds up there look a little ominous I hope it doesn't rain. That'll be an experience. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I wanna get, I wanna ride, I wanna put some miles on this thing, get used to her. Uh, so far, I love it, I gotta be honest. No regrets. And I'm excited to customize. So right now I'm going 50 miles an hour and it feels like 25. Like it's crazy. I'm in fourth gear, I'm in right along. And the power of these bikes is impressive. You know, coming from a 900cc motorcycle. I'm just gonna take it slow because uh, the roads are slick. It's really windy today too. I don't know if you could tell, but the wind is kind of blowing me around a little bit. Not too bad. I feel it on my body more than the bike. And another great part about getting this particular bike for myself, it's a 2022. It was, it was bought in April of 2022. Pretty sure it still has a couple of months left of warranty until April of this year, 2024. So, 
that's not too shabby either, right? I mean, so far it seems to be running great. Again, it has under 500 miles on it, so what could be wrong with it? That was another thing. That's why I wasn't worried about getting it checked out, uh, you know, by a, a mechanic before I bought it. Because at, at such low miles, I figure, what could be wrong with it? Now, there's always something that could be wrong with it. But, the odds are in my favor. Nah, I think I'm going to get Apple CarPlay. I hook that up. That seems like it's doable. Oh, so let me tell you about the stuff that I did to the bike since I got it. I've had it for about a month now. Well, like I said, this is my first video because it's been too cold and the weather has been bad. So I've only ridden this less than a handful of times. Um, but the one thing I did right before I rode it at all was I put on some saddlebag guards. I got those from Advan Black. Um, I put those on myself, pretty much no problem. It was a little bit tedious uh, with a couple of the bolts, but you know, I went out, got, a, got some tools, got the right tools, and when you have the right tools, see, look, I'm going 60 miles an hour, and it feels like I'm going 35. So when you have the right tools, it makes it much easier. Um, and so I was able to get the saddlebag guards on, and then I got the motorcycle drop guards to put on the crash bars. And when I told my wife that's what I was doing, she looked at me like I was nuts. And when you, when you say it out loud, it sounds a little nuts, right? I'm getting guards to protect my guards. But, like Robert Simmons, shout out to Robert Simmons, be the boss of your motorcycle. He said, when you have a bike that, you know, is a $30,000 motorcycle or more, uh, you want to protect it as best you can. Uh, and, and spending a little extra money to get guards for your guards makes it worth it. Because now you don't have to worry about damaging your motorcycle. And you could always fix up the motorcycle drop guards if they get scraped up. That's not a big deal. Although I gotta figure out how you do that on the black ones. Like, I don't know what when you say you could fix them. How do you fix them? But, you can do it. You know, at the end of the day, you're not replacing your actual crash guards in the front and the back if your bike falls or tips over. And inevitably, it's gonna happen. So, now, I won't freak out if and when it happens. Uh, and so that peace of mind was worth it. So those are the first things I did. I got the saddlebag guards, and I got the motorcycle drop guards. I hooked up my quad lock wireless mount, uh, which was nice. I ran the wire through the fairing a little bit and down the center console here. Oh, oh, oh. See? I'm going like 50 and making a turn at 50 a little too fast a little too fast so right now if you can see I don't know if you can see I got 436 miles on this puppy so those are the three things I did to this bike so far and I ordered the windshield like I said right so that'll be coming um, and now I'm just gonna take my time figure out what I want to do next um, I don't know if you have uh, ideas you know, I was thinking about getting a new seat. This is a stock seat. But frankly, I mean, I haven't taken it out on a long you know, trip yet. I'm gonna wait for the spring. You know, I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'7", 160. The seat's pretty comfortable. But, you know, I won't know how comfortable it is until I take it out for a long ride. But the seat's an option. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to get taller handlebars. I don't know. You know, this is comfortable for me. I gotta say, like, when I first got on this bike, I was like, now this is comfortable. Woo! 70 miles in third gear! I don't know if 
about getting you know a little bit taller uh, handlebars or what style handlebars to get that may be something or I might just keep them like this because this is kind of comfortable but you know again I won't know what I really need until I take this out for a longer ride uh, and get a feel for her. Uh, the floorboards though my seating position uh, on any bike with the floorboards is just so much more comfortable than the pegs and even the forward controls uh, with the pegs I love this uh, I, I'm all about the floorboards now and I'm fine with these stock floorboards I don't you know I'm not really looking to get new floorboards maybe in the future but I, I don't mind the way these look and I don't mind the way these feel so that's really not high up on my priority list I really like the brakes on this thing the rear brake is good, the front brake is good. They're nice and, and cushiony and soft, but not like not like bad soft. Oh, that's where I'm going. Right over there. I'm glad I'm paying attention here. So the brakes are good. The brakes on my Kawasaki were not great. I'll tell you a little story. The first time I took it out, I parked in a parking lot, in a parking space that was on a little incline I was going, I mean decline, I was going down, head in, and as I was pulling in, I'm like, oh, this is not going to be good getting out, and I got myself a little stuck, and I couldn't back out on this thing, it was too heavy, right, on it, and I thought I was going to be stuck, or be embarrassed and have to ask strangers to help me kind of push it out of the parking spot, but I was able to kind of turn it, back it up just enough where I could turn it, and turn it around, and I parked facing outward in the spot next to me. Uh, so now, with this bike, I gotta be cognizant of that all the time where I park, so I could either pull out head first, um, because you're not backing this sucker up. I'm not backing this sucker up on my feet. All right, let's go in and get my contacts. Ooh, look at those clouds. So we're getting a little ominous, so I'm gonna have to get out of here ASAP. So it's a little windy, uh, if, it, if it's really bad, I apologize. But so, the other thing I love about touring bikes and having hard bags is that I got to my destination, I can put my gloves in there, I had to brought, bring these in because I'm exchanging them. Um, and just storage, you know, the bag that I, I come out with, I could put it in, um, I could put it, I could it back in there. I can't fit my helmet in there. All right, so I'll carry my helmet. But like other things, I love it. Uh, also got these uh, saddlebag liners, which are, are handy too. Uh, all right, check back in a minute. All right, I'm on my way back. It started to rain, of course, but there's the sun. Oh, I'm gonna have to wipe, wipe my big red down when I get home. That's for sure. All right, you know what? Gotta learn how to drive in the rain, my friends. Just taking it slow. And you know, I was thinking about this, what I would do, what I want to do with this bike. At some point, I definitely want to do a stage two and put a cam in there just to get that Harley, that sound that I crave, that, you know, put, 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 put. So I'd probably go with a torque cam. But that'll be in the future. I want to ride this bike for a while. Really get to know her. So I could really, you know, feel the difference when I do the stage two. Right now I've got a stage one. I don't know if this has been tuned or not. Um, and you know, I've been doing a lot of uh, our research and this videos on do you even need to tune a stage one I don't know what the right answer is but when I do a stage two we'll definitely I guess get it dyno tuned look at that I'm 65 in third gear it still amazes me it really does still amaze me the power and not only the power but the fact that you don't feel it. Like, I don't feel like I'm going 65. Now I'm going 50. But you know what I mean. 
I know, I know. I probably sound like a little boy at a candy shop, right? But that's what this is. This is a, a big boy toy, and I'm excited. I look forward to making many videos to show you guys my experience. This is not the end of my journey, this is the beginning. So I hope you stick with me. Please like and subscribe to the channel and follow me. Uh, and we could, we can go, we all go through this together. All right? Be safe. Talk to you guys soon.